everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to turn back the clock to look at a spinning project I filmed a couple of years ago. I'm not sure if you remember, but once upon a time, I dyed some yarn and fiber with Sharpie highlighters, and the results were so much fun. After spinning the singles, I really did wish that I had planned to make a two-ply yarn. The singles were relatively low twist and fluffy, and I didn't want to chain ply it anymore. And so I thought that I would film the process using one of my favorite tips for when I have a little bit of extra hand spun and to make it a two ply, but I hadn't ever tried it on a full skein of yarn. And this trick is to ply using both ends of a center pull ball. Uh, and well, let's go take a look at how it turned out. Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I am back with my highlighter dyed roving. Well, this Cheviot fiber is no longer roving, I have spun it into singles, but we still can have a lot of fun with the black light. Uh, the colors that we dyed, especially the ones dyed with the yellow highlighter, which since we learned are pH sensitive and therefore we don't see the yellow on the fiber at all, um, it does still fluoresce after months of being on the fiber. So what am I gonna do with this beautiful, beautiful fiber? Clearly I've spun 100 grams. This bobbin is mostly full, but there's a few choices. I have these beautiful singles and I could end ply, um, but I really do want a two ply yarn and I didn't plan for it. So what am I gonna do? I am gonna wind all of this into a center pull ball and then spin from both ends of the ball. This is a technique that I've done a lot of times when I have leftover, some leftover singles on one bobbin and you know I don't wanna leave it as singles or end chain ply it or something, but I have not done it with a full 100 gram section of fiber. I'm a little nervous that the singles could break, uh, that it could end up twisting all over itself, but I'm also optimistic that I can get the two ply yarn that I see in my brain and that I really want. So let's go give this a shot. All right, I have my ball winder and I'm gonna put the yarn in. Since these singles are a little thin, I'm gonna make sure it catches. And now I'm just going to carefully wind this into a center pull ball. Now, if I look at the yarn, um, actually my singles are not over twisted. I hope that they're strong enough, but you can see that the amount of twist is pretty low, at least in this area that I'm doing right now. So I think we have a reasonable kind of shot here of creating our yarn. Now, I shared this technique as a tip on Instagram and Facebook a while ago because it is truly something I wish that I had known as a beginner, but uh, I haven't tried it with this volume of yarn. So while this is both a tried and true tip, um, I am also trying something new. But hey, that's what we do here at Cabinets. So anyway, once I have completed this center pull ball, I'll come back and we'll get ready to ply our yarn. We got the whole thing in a cake with no breakage. I'm gonna pull out our first end a bit. Um, and so that way, now that the cake is off, we have our inner end and our outer end and we can ply them both together holding this cake in my lap. I have taken both ends of the yarn cake, got to insert my leader. Now with my leader ready to go, I'm going to take the two ends of my yarn cake and I'm actually going to hold all three of these strands together and knot them. Um, so you can certainly do this without tying a knot. Uh, I just find that this ends up leading to less frustration because things don't fall off the, the leader. And remove some of that fiber. And now let's start spinning. There we go. 
And now I really am just spinning, drawing the yarn from the two sides of this yarn cake. And we have a beautiful loose two ply yarn. Here's a close up, uh, not that close, but here's a close up of the yarn. And you can even set this cake on, on the ground, whatever makes sense for you. However you're comfortable with your spinning. But I was actually very impressed that this did not um, break as I was sort of taking it out. Um, I was really afraid that it was going to snap from the tension of winding the ball. Sometimes you'll see some like twists form up. You can just whoop, straighten that out with your other hand. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with actually this really light and fluffy yarn. With the chair I'm sitting in, you don't really want to hold it between your knees because it'd be hard to pull the yarn. It's a little easier to have it sort of tucked um, someplace. If I was on a lower stool, I think it would be a little easier to hold into my lap. But there we go. I can just sort of set it on my lap. And then as needed, straighten it out. Because obviously at this stage, the um, as I'm pulling, you can get more yarn from one side than the other. Um, so you know, more from the outside than the inside. So you just want to make sure it doesn't get twisted. But holding it in my lap, um, it works great. And I'll give you a close up now that we've looked at my hands a bit of what this is looking like in my lap. You might need to shift the ball around in your lap a little bit. You don't really want it locked in between your knees, but you can see that um, the strands are just you're able to work with both sides at the same time, which you know you can do that for many different projects, not just spinning. Now one advantage here is that when we get to the end, we're gonna end up with one continuous skein of yarn versus if we had spun singles, if we had divided the fiber in half and spun our singles onto two separate bobbins, then we might end up with a big skein and a small skein. You know, it's sort of like, you know, you could end up with excess and therefore, not that it's waste because you can still use it, but this really will give us one yarn. And I'm really excited to see what the final pattern will be like. Since I'm right-handed, I thought it could be worth giving a view of this from my left hand. Hopefully not blocking it too much. But you can see we have these two strands coming together. Honestly, this is a lot quieter when I use the Lazy Kate it sort of comes with the wheel because I'm not hearing the bobbins like whirl around as I'm spinning and then if I stop suddenly the yarn is just gonna stay put. It's not really going anywhere. And then when I need the break I can just sort of lightly leave this cake um, on the bottom of my wheel and cross my fingers that the chem kids won't get a hold of it and won't unravel any of the progress that I've made. Here is our two ply yarn so far. It is soft, it is subtle. Um, the yarn is mostly this orange and sort of some of the original bear color and some of that highlighter yellow. But then there's these hints of pinks throughout. And so it's just warm and soft and I'm really excited by it. If you would like to know more about how I dyed this fiber with highlighters, with Sharpie highlighters, uh, check out the live stream and recap. I'll have links to all this in the video description. I would also like to thank Paradise Fibers for sending me their Fiber of the Month Club subscription so that way I can share it with all of you. This project has really delighted me. Um, and if you want to learn more about the Fiber or the Fiber of the Month Club, my affiliate link is in the video description. Now at this stage, our yarn cake is still pretty dense. But at some point, it's going to start getting more hollow, and that is where I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned 
that it might twist up and we might end up with a tangled mess. Of course, if that happens, I will come and show you and let you know. But if everything is just smooth sailing, then I might just come back when I've got the finished two-ply yarn. The other thing to keep in mind at this stage is that this yarn, these singles, don't have a lot of twist in them. When I fold them back on each other, they twist around each other a little bit, but it is certainly not extreme. That level and that low level of twist, I think, is one of the things that's going to give me a success here. If this were one of my yarns where I severely over twisted it, which is a problem that I have a lot, um, finding that balance between breaking and not overdoing the twist, I think that uh, you would be much more likely to run into trouble with the yarn cake with sort of getting those little um, little twists popping up and you know risking more of a tangle. But I am very optimistic that I'm going to be able to finish this off. I'm starting to get down to the end of the cake. It's quite hollow and things are still going really smoothly. Again, I think it's because of the relatively low twist that I have in the singles. Check out that pretty, pretty yarn. Now that we are approaching the end, it doesn't look much like a yarn cake anymore. However, I'm still able to pull from it and get the two strands without much issue and things have not yet gotten so tangled that I couldn't easily fix it to keep going. Yeah, I, I'm starting to think that I should do this for some more of my projects. Now that I am approaching the end, rather than having the cake on the ground, I'm actually pulling from it directly um, and the twist is low enough that I'm still able to straighten things out. Okay. And now we are approaching the very end. Oh good, I'm a little glad that the midpoint is going to be oh, some orange versus uh, some of the pink because I don't think I have any like two-ply pink or a lot of that in here. But now you see I've got the end sort of at this little little loop and there we have it that is the end of our ball that went nice and easy i just took off the flyer but we have here a really really beautiful two-ply yarn that has just a small level of twist and i'm actually really really excited because i think i got a ton of yardage out of this 100 grams and I'm not good at getting a ton of yardage out of my hand spun projects. So I'm really excited to see what the final yardage of this will be. And our final test, let's look under it, under our black light. And ooh, look at how much that glows. I suppose this isn't the final test because there will be one more. Um, I will look at the final skein under a black light as well. but. I am very, very excited uh, to see what it's going to look like, and I love the way that the plies and the twists are just glowing here. This worked so well. The only thing that didn't work is that there was so much time in between when I filmed that and now, I have no idea where my notes are on this yarn. Normally, after I ply the yarn, I wind from the bobbin onto one of my PVC pipe knitting knotties, then I set the twist with some warm water, let that dry, and then before I take it off the knitting knotty, I usually count the wraps, and that's how I estimate the yardage that I have. And around that time is usually also when I measure the wraps per inch, uh, so I have that information. I don't know where that information is. I suppose I can still open this up and count the number of, of like wraps around the Nitty Naughty I would have. I could put it back on a Nitty Naughty and then I could check the WPI. Uh, so I will probably do that later on, but uh, I just think that it's funny that I don't have that information. Actually, the way I used to keep track of that is back when I was doing more writing for the Chemnitz website, I would usually, in a draft, share that information. But I checked through my email, I checked through Ravelry, I checked 
through old blogger posts and I couldn't find any of it. So I'm gonna have to go figure all of that out. But two years later, the colors are the same. There hasn't been any fading as, I mean, granted this has been not exposed to sun, but there hasn't been any fading. And well, let's go look at a black light. I promised one more check-in with the black light and oh my goodness, I am so glad I did. This looks so cool. Because the yellow highlighter color isn't really visible uh, under white light, uh, and it is a stronger glow than say that fluorescent pink up there, now you can really see that barber pole, something that is otherwise super, super subtle in the yarn. So man, this is awesome and so much fun. I am so, 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 so glad I came to look at the black light again. And here is that same angle in, well, it's artificial light, but oh my goodness, what a difference. So you can see that two years later, the colors are still fluorescent. So if you were curious about the longevity and if, you know, maybe it would go away with time, it's possible that when exposed to sunlight that these colors will fade. I would say that, that there's a likelihood in that. Fluorescent acid dyes in general fade faster uh, than some other colors, but I, it lasted for years. So hey, there's an experiment I didn't plan. The finished yarn just turned out so pretty and I am so, so happy. I'm not sure yet what I will do with it. Uh, certainly if I was gonna put it in my shop, I would need to get the wraps per inch and the approximate yardage. But I have a feeling that my orange loving son may want me to use this for him. Actually, this would work really, really well for a color work project, uh, maybe mixed. Uh, with a black. That would be a lot of fun. Anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you enjoyed this video and this trip back down memory lane when my hair was a lot shorter. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I publish at least two new yarn dyeing or yarn dyeing adjacent videos every single week and you don't want to miss a thing. And I know in some of my recent roving dyeing videos I've requested for you to let me know if you want some more spinning content. And well, here's some spinning content, but please let me know below if I should try to film some more because it is a lot of fun to film and I think that it would be fun to create more. Thank you so much for watching.